guys, Travis at Parker Mountain Machine. Uh, we wanna give you a little bit of an inside look at how we do our recoil uh, testing with the compensators. So for starters, we do have a production version of the Staccato Comp here on the Staccato C2. Uh, this contraption you see it mounted in is from Ransom International Corporation. Uh, they're mostly used in law enforcement for recreating ballistics, but uh, in layman's terms, it's a repeatable hinge. You're able to clamp the guns in with specific uh, pads here that are molded to the gun, get a, a consistent sight picture, uh, as well as a consistent pressure on the spring here. So when the gun fires, it'll recoil, it'll pause at the last part of recoil, uh, and that's where we went and bolted a digital inclimeter to it. So we're then able to record that angle that it has risen to. What that does is allows us to shoot a, a 10 round. We typically go with 10 round just because different guns have different size mags. We keep it consistent. Uh, 10 round control group and we do two groups for everything. Uh, so we'll get the muzzle climb on a factory gun and then we can do the same thing, test it, same ammo, same day, like typically in the next five minutes uh, with the compensator installed. We use this a lot for testing for production to figure out where we want the performance to be and what each pistol can handle for reduction. So as far as recording the data that we get off of this, we, like I said, have a digital inclimeter. Uh, we're able to zero this out per pistol because each pistol is gonna be pointed a little differently at the target. Uh, don't really wanna shoot the floor while we're testing this stuff. So this in conjunction with a chronograph that we have set up, uh, gives us extra data, especially if we're starting to see some weird stuff in some numbers. Uh, like say if we saw 17.9 degrees on one shot, uh, but saw 22.3 on another one, we can kind of see if one round was a little hotter than the other. Depending on the ammo, you can see 50 to 75 foot per second deviation from shot to shot. Uh, we try to stick with a little bit more consistent ammo than that, so I don't have to throw a bunch of data away. But that shows us if there's any outliers in the groups uh, and then we go ahead and shoot another one if there's something wild in there. So another thing that we add to with the data, so I said 10 round groups, uh, typically I'll load 11 in every single mag and the reason for that is uh, not for like the extra weight or anything, but the pistol will recoil differently on its lockback. So we might see, like again, go back to that 17.9 degree number uh, on lockback, it might be 12. Uh, so that's another outlier as far as like the super hot round. Lockback's not going to give us accurate data. So uh, we shoot a two, 10 round group out of an 11 round mag. So it never uh, never has an, any inconsistency uh, outside of suppose the, the magazine getting lighter as we shoot it. But again, we keep it consistent with the same weight ammo uh, and across all guns. So that's just part of it. So on top of the data that we get from the inclimeter and the just speed on the chronograph, the chronograph has a slick little app that shows me a bunch of extra data, uh, like temperature, barometric pressure. Um, there's a few other things that I can record in there as far as bullet weight, and it gives me uh, uh, the power factor of the ammo. So that all just goes towards consistency. And as far as the temperature stuff, it, it is New England, it fluctuates a lot, but we try to keep our testing from like the 30 degree Fahrenheit to about 50 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, we try not to do a lot of testing in 90 degree summer heat because that'll really throw the numbers as well. Uh, but yeah, that's an inside look as to how we collect our data. Now that we've gone over how we collect our data, uh, we're just gonna do a little uh, demonstration on how we put that all together, put it into some of the graphs so you get some numbers that you guys can understand, uh, as well as show you how all that works and it's not just magic made up numbers. So if we look at this graph here, uh, this was one of the uh, prototype testings with the actual version of the comp that we went with for production. So on the left here, you can see a baseline non-compensated uh, set of 10 shots with the velocities as well as on the right side, you can see it says newest, that's the current revision of the comp, 10 shots using, as you can see at the top, Remington UMC. So if we look at the uh, left here, we got angle of climb. You can see 10 different numbers. Uh, they're all in the mid, mid 20s. Uh, we do average that out. Uh, and we again compare these against uh, the other, the second set of groups that we do. Uh, so we'll, group one goes versus group one, then one versus two, two versus one. So we're cross-checking everything. But 
You can see on this one, we got 25.26 as an average as the angle of climb and 1,178.6 feet per second is the average. Now, if we move over and we look at the comp version of that, uh, we're, we're seeing just under a 10 degree difference. It's one of the biggest we've been able to get out of a single port. So looking at an average of 15.49 degrees in muzzle rise, uh, a little lower velocity on that group, we got 1154.5. Like I said, the, the feet per second can vary quite a bit from uh, different types of ammo. So we've got a total of 39% uh, reduction in muzzle rise. Uh, it's an average of a 9.77 degree difference. Uh, it's going to be a little higher than most of the single port comps, but these Staccatos are uh, they're real slick and uh, they're, they're tuned really well, so we're able to kind of push the performance on these. Uh, typically, you're going to see around 30 to 35% on a single port. Now, if you're looking at the, the sheet, uh, it also says slant on the comp. Uh, this is where we first started testing a little bit of an angle on the, uh, the blast wall in the comp. Uh, from what we found, the, the gases leave a little bit more efficiently than just a straight up and down wall. Uh, so we're, we're usually on the comps that we're starting to implement that on, seeing anywhere from an extra two to 5% uh, based off of uh, what we've seen over the 90 degree wall. So to really just simplify it, what we're doing is we're taking an average uh, both in velocity and angle of climb across 10 shots, and then we just subtract the difference. That's how we're getting uh, the difference in muzzle climb, uh, as well as the you know, percentage difference is obviously calculated off of that. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, again, we do this uh, with every single thing we test, whether it's the first comp that came off the machine and it does 15%, it tells us, hey, we can either up the uh, volume in the comp or tighten up the through, roll, through hole on the uh, comp a little bit to uh, capture some more gas. So we're not just building comps and like here's the number that's what it is we have a target that we go for uh, we don't want to go too high where the pistol no longer functions and we don't want to go so low where we're leaving performance on the table so uh, just a little inside look on the the testing phase of parker mountain machine